What if I told you this multi-billion dollar spacecraft uses a docking system inspired by mountain bike parts? It sounds ridiculous, right? But that's exactly how SpaceX engineers approached one of the most complex challenges in human spaceflight, docking the Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. Instead of over-engineering with layers of electronics, motors, and software, they went back to the basics, asking, what really matters in docking? And the answer led them to an elegantly simple, low-cost, and reliable system. This is the story of how SpaceX used first principle thinking to reinvent spacecraft docking, and why their approach is changing how we build for space. Before anything else, let's understand why a docking system is even necessary. The answer is pretty straightforward. A docking system allows spacecraft to securely and efficiently connect with one another, or in this case, with space stations like the ISS. Back in 1996, NASA began developing something called the Low Impact Docking System, or LIDS. The idea was to make spacecraft connections simpler, while also cutting down on potential risks. Unlike a passive setup, LIDS is actively controlled and uses force feedback technology to ensure the spacecraft can dock smoothly and with minimal impact. It's versatile too. LIDS can handle various types of operations, including docking, berthing, autonomous and crewed rendezvous, as well as piecing together spacecraft and modules in orbit. And it's not just about attaching vehicles. It's also designed to transfer crew, cargo, power, fluids, and data between docked spacecraft. In the beginning, the system was overly complicated, like building a high-tech Swiss Army knife when all that was really needed was a simple spoon. The first version, called the International LIDS, or ILIDS, was packed with advanced features, including electromagnets to pull spacecraft together and multiple motors to control even the tiniest movements. It was meant to be extra gentle to avoid putting stress on the ISS, but the result was a design that was heavy, costly, and difficult to manufacture. By 2012, NASA realized this approach wasn't practical. They launched a study to look for something more streamlined. Boeing proposed a new concept called the Soft Impact Mating and Attenuation Concept, or SIMAC. Think of it as a simplified version of ILIDS. Instead of a complex system, it used a smaller ring with three pedals that could softly capture the other spacecraft. This made docking not only more affordable but also easier, while still being safe for the ISS. In 2014, NASA chose CIMAC, and it became the foundation for what we now know as the NASA docking system used on the ISS and spacecraft like Starliner. Even with the more streamlined CMAC design, developing and testing the docking system ended up taking much longer than anyone anticipated. NASA initially expected to wrap up testing by 2013, but the process stretched all the way to 2017. A big reason was the technical hurdles. They kept uncovering small issues that had to be fixed along the way. On top of that, they had to coordinate with other countries to ensure everyone agreed on the international standards, since the ISS isn't just an American project. That meant endless meetings, stacks of paperwork, and rounds of approvals. It was basically like trying to finish a group project where every member had a different opinion. Getting the docking system to work seamlessly with both the ISS and new spacecraft like Starliner wasn't easy. Engineers had to design and install special adapters on the station, which caused even more delays. As a result, the system wasn't fully operational until the late 2000s, slowing down missions and adding extra complexity for NASA and its international partners. It really highlights just how challenging it is to create something that's simple, reliable, and universally usable in space. But when it came to SpaceX, the story unfolded in a very different way. Instead of over-engineering things the way NASA often did, SpaceX engineers like Matthews, 
along with his intern Craig Western, started by asking the most basic question, how do we safely and reliably attach the Dragon spacecraft to the ISS? The main challenges were clear, dealing with small misalignments, absorbing the impact forces at contact, and locking the capsule securely in place. They broke it down into fundamentals. The docking system should gently slow the spacecraft and hold it steady against the ISS. It must naturally handle small differences in position and speed. It needs to lock firmly for crew and cargo transfers. It should be lightweight, low power, and reusable. This contrasted sharply with NASA's approach, which relied on complex systems full of actuators, electronics, and intricate software. That complexity meant higher cost, more weight, more power consumption, and more potential failure points. So SpaceX took a different route. They thought, when two spacecraft touch, the force needs to be absorbed to prevent damage. And what's great at absorbing shocks? A mountain bike suspension. They borrowed the same principle, springs that cushion bumps on rough trails and applied it to docking. This natural spring system could manage bumps and misalignments without fancy computers or expensive electronics. It was lighter, simpler, reusable, and needed far less power. On top of that, they added soft pedals that could gently catch and hold the other spacecraft, then automatically lock it in place without extra controls. The result was a system that tolerated small errors, worked reliably, and was faster and cheaper to build and test. By focusing on the core problem and leaning on simple, robust, mechanical parts inspired by bike shocks, SpaceX engineers brought their prototype docking mechanism, nicknamed the McDocker, to life in 2013. When the engineers presented their prototype to Mark Junkosa, one of Elon Musk's trusted lieutenants, he immediately saw its promise and brought it straight to Musk. Musk gave his approval on the spot allowing the team to push ahead with production without hesitation. But over at NASA, engineers were puzzled. Why would SpaceX even bother designing its own docking system? NASA had already spent more than a decade developing one in partnership with Boeing and had even offered it to SpaceX for free. Docking with the ISS was a risky, high-stakes task, and NASA was confident its system would do the job safely. All SpaceX needed to do was install it. Although some NASA engineers were skeptical at first, the McDocker system has since proven itself in practice, delivering reliable performance through extensive testing and multiple successful missions in space. On March 3, 2019, the Crew Dragon Demo-1 mission marked a historic milestone by completing the first-ever commercial docking with the ISS using the McDocker system. It managed small misalignments and the relative speed between Dragon and the station with ease, safely absorbing contact forces to achieve a soft kiss with the station. Before launch, McDocker had already gone through more than 450 soft capture tests where the spacecraft gently latched onto simulated docking ports. These rigorous trials proved its ability to handle the real challenges of docking in space. The system has proven itself not just in simulations but also through the use of straightforward mechanical components, like passive soft capture latches and spring-loaded pedals, that handle uncertainties in position and speed during docking without failure. Throughout each docking and undocking, SpaceX and NASA carefully tracked flight telemetry and compared it with simulations to confirm the system was performing within its design limits. This process led to refinements that boosted its reliability even further, both before and after the first flight. Since Demo-1, Crew Dragon has continued to deliver outstanding docking results across multiple cargo and crew missions, solidifying McDocker's reputation as a robust and dependable system in real orbital operations. The story of McDocker highlights the power of first principle thinking an approach to innovation that's become popular among Silicon Valley thinkers. As SpaceX founder Elon Musk explained, it means taking a physics-style approach, breaking problems down to their most fundamental truths and reasoning up from there, rather than relying on analogies. 
This method, he emphasized, is especially crucial when you want to do something new. It also underscores a key difference in approach between SpaceX and NASA. NASA has decades of experience building docking systems, but its designs have long been known for their complexity. That complexity means long cycles of planning, design, and testing, all under strict safety regulations. For years, complexity was equated with reliability. But as Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, explained at a conference, that assumption is wrong. Oftentimes, the simplest thing is the best design and the most reliable. Complexity, we like to say, is the devil. Spending a lot of time optimizing, simplifying, and deleting parts from your product is critical. That's why SpaceX tends to approach problems from the ground up, asking, what is really needed to solve this? When engineers showed the bike part-inspired docking system to Elon Musk, he approved it almost instantly. No endless meetings or piles of paperwork. It was a sign of how SpaceX trusts its engineers, makes fast decisions, and fosters creative, practical solutions. At most other companies, an idea like that would have been dismissed. After all, could a young engineer really improve on NASA's decade-long design? Why even try? So what about you? Have you ever used first principle thinking in your own life? Personally, I've tried applying it to improving my mental health. And honestly, it's been surprisingly effective. Share your own experiences in the comment section below. Interestingly, first principle thinking wasn't just used for McDocker. It was also applied to other parts of SpaceX's rockets, like the Falcon 9 fairing. Traditionally, fairings were single use. After protecting the payload during launch, they'd break off and either sink into the ocean or burn up in the atmosphere. At $3 million each, that was a very expensive throwaway. So SpaceX engineers asked, why not reuse them? To answer that, they broke the problem down. How do you stop a fairing from breaking when it falls back to Earth? How do you control where it lands? And how do you recover it without seawater damage? They tried solutions like adding thrusters, slowing descent with parafoil parachutes, and even catching the fairing mid-air with ships and giant nets. But the process demanded extreme precision, and things like shifting winds or rough seas made it unreliable. The success rate was under 20%. So the problem was simplified again. What actually happens when a fairing hits the ocean? Well, it floats. It's basically a boat. That led to a clearer first principle. If the fairing floats, just protect the sensitive parts. Engineers moved the electronics to the top section, where splashing water wouldn't reach. And by making the fairing land upright, with the open side facing up, they reduced the risk of flooding. Instead of fighting physics, they worked with it and came up with a much simpler, more reliable solution. This is also referred to as the algorithm that SpaceX uses when designing new technology to solve problems. Essentially, it provides a roadmap for innovating. When you're fundamentally innovating a new technology, you're wrong, he said. It's just a question of how wrong because your ability to learn is changing constantly. So where you start is certainly not where you're going to end up. The algorithm begins with two steps. Make the requirements less dumb and delete the part or process step. This means engineers should think outside the box and challenge existing requirements. They should then ask whether they're solving the right problem.